Big, bright, and red. The red planet. You can see why they called it after the war god of Mars there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. So glad you're with us to stay curious. Coming through a, a, a gap here in the southwest and a good old western, looking for the the chuck wagon around the corner there as we're on a wagon train or something here. But no, that green screen is a beautiful shot of Mars uh, taken by one of our rovers, Perseverance. And it is incredible how Mars can look like our Southwest America in, in every region. The dusty, cold, fourth rock from the sun we're going to feature today on Stay Curious and take you literally boots on the ground to Mars. We being Marty Winkle, my co-producer for over 700 episodes of Stay Curious. How are you, Marty? Have you been seeing Mars in the sky at night? I'm doing good, Mark. And yes, I've been seeing Mars. I'm sure you have also. Yeah, it's, it's easy to see now when it gets dark. Just look to the east and it is red as can be. In fact, to the right of it is another red star called Aldebaran, which is the eye of Taurus the Bull. And above both of them is a star cluster called the Pleiades. So this is a great week to get out and do some stargazing from your own backyard because the moon is not in the evening sky. It's in the late morning sky going towards new phase. And uh, you've got all of the winter constellations rising up. And we'll be talking about them for the next uh, couple of Stargazer Mondays that we do on Stay Curious. Uh, but today, Stargazer, we want to just kind of emphasize a little bit about Mars and take you boots on the ground, so to speak, on the surface of Mars and try and help you wrap your head around this, this world that's barely half the size of our own Earth and twice the size of our moon. Big in our minds, but Mars is certainly... Uh, a small planet and a very cold planet. And you know what? We're, we're going to plan on going there. Uh, so we're going to talk about the fourth rock from the sun. We're going to give you some details about it. We're going to talk about going there. And we're going to give a good old dive bombing of it with Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship going over Valles Marineris there in what is not is science fiction now, but uh, could be science fact in the next decade when Musk professes to take a hundred people at a time to the planet Mars and colonize it. And uh, these are some big, big dreams, but so are, have been a lot of dreams on Earth that have fulfilled, have been fulfilled, including walking on the moon and building a space station that America has done. But you look at Mars at night, on, that, on the, the, night, uh, the night sky, you see it up there. It is a reddish star it, it it doesn't twinkle very much planets usually don't twinkle a whole lot because they are not points of light they're reflected light in that uh, so that's one reason why they don't twinkle but it is so big in our minds yet so far away every two years mars comes closest to earth for just three months where we can see the surface of Mars. And that period of time is right now. Come uh, March, it'll be too far away and you won't be able to see it, but just a little tiny disk. But from a backyard, you can see it about like this, like I've photographed through one of my telescopes. Uh, you can see dark markings on it and a polar cap. On the left side, that little bluish area, that sunrise going on. So it's gonna look tiny 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 in a telescope and even big telescopes it's not doesn't look that big uh, and but you can still see the surface as I photographed here with an eight inch reflecting telescope and it's so exciting that only the moon and Mars are the only objects in the entire night sky from your backyard that we can see the surface of well, not only is Mars up there right now, but Jupiter's directly overhead and Saturn is in the west as uh, darkness descends upon us. Go out about 7 o'clock. It's good and dark then. You'll see Mars red to the, to the east, Jupiter directly overhead, and to the right of Jupiter and towards the western horizon will be Saturn. 
if you have a telescope of any kind, get it out, got that Christmas telescope, start uh, practicing on the planets. They're easy to find and easy to learn how to maneuver your telescope too. Through other telescopes, we can see Mars like this, a little bigger telescope I used for this version. But this is Mars in 2020, two years ago, when a global dust storm covered the whole Mars. And we couldn't see the features on it like you can in this photograph taken by my good friend Johnny Horn uh, in uh, Fayetteville, uh, 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 North Carolina is where Johnny lives. He was a newspaper reporter there uh, near Statesville. That whole area in the middle of the Carolinas. Gorgeous photograph there. Actually, this is the same part of the of Mars that you can see in... Uh, let me go back here to this picture. See that little triangular belt there? The belt and the little triangle there? That is what is in this image right here. So we hope there's not a global dust storm to obscure Mars. Nothing has happened yet, but about every every 10 or 12 years, it seems to get engulfed in this uh, uh, very finite like talcum powder dust, and you can't see the surface except the polar cap there. And, uh, well, those going to Mars haven't thought that through much about what if there's a global dust storm and it lasts for a couple months like it did in 2020, and uh, it basically killed the uh, Opportunity rover because it couldn't get enough sunlight and got drenched with a, a bunch of dust covering its solar panels. And it Opportunity died in 2020. But now we're roving Mars with uh, uh, two rovers. Uh, everyone forgets Opportunity it has been, uh, not Opportunity, the rover Curiosity has been on Mars for 11 years, and this is one of the major panoramas it's taken. Look at that. If that doesn't look like the southwest Arizona or New Mexico, and uh, you've got rubble there, you've got layered, striated layers in the back that are evidence that an ocean, a lake, was laying where this rover is right now. You can see in the background there the levels of the where the water was uh, lowered. Well, when was this covered with water? probably 3 billion years ago. In Mars's early history, it was covered with water, just like in Earth's early history, we were covered with molten lava and a lot of volcanic activity going on. Well, here's a demonstration to show you how Mars gets closer to Earth. This is the apparent diameter in relation to what it looks like in a telescope. And you can see right now in December 2022, it's going to drop a lot in size just in the next month so get out there and look at it all my astronomy friends are we're making photographs we're sketching it because once again you can only do this once every two years and then uh, mars will be so far away coming in uh, uh, may and april look how small it'll be in april just a few months from now well how many Manned spacecraft do we have orbiting Mars right now? What is the tally of what's going on? Uh, you'll be amazed. Uh, over uh, uh, 40 spacecraft have been sent to Mars uh, to either land or orbit it, and over half of them have failed. A very low, uh, very bad, uh, uh, you know, 50 50 almost is the chance. But the ones in the last, in the 20th century have all made it, uh, uh, except one of the ESAs. Uh, named Beagle, but uh, we got to think about not just the rovers we're going to talk about here in a minute, which we've got three rovers on Mars, three rovers on Mars. Okay, keep that in mind. What are the three rovers active on Mars right now? But what are the orbiters active on Mars? Well, here we are looking at uh, robots that are looking for Martians, and we have had for 11 years Mars Odyssey orbiting Mars, and for the last nine years, Mars Express has been orbiting from um, the ESA, a great, great uh, spacecraft, Mars Express. And then Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been orbiting for uh, 16 years, all right, and uh, 21 years, I mean, for o Mars Odyssey has been lasted 21 years, okay. And then 16 years for Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It had at one time the most powerful cameras ever put in orbit around another uh, object. And now that 
think it, that goes to Cassini had him orbiting Saturn for a while, but very powerful for 16 years. This Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has really shown us a lot of the changes climatically and other things happening on Mars, including meteor impacts, rock slides, amazing, amazing spacecraft is MRO. Then Mars, uh, then in 2014, the uh, NASA put in MAVEN, and that is Mars Atmospheric Volatile Environment uh, spacecraft. And it is studying a specific part of Mars's atmosphere where what, how did it lose this atmosphere that it once had to have had to have the liquid on the surface it had? Then ESA and Russia have put in orbit ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, which is just that, looking for some of the early signs of Mars' uh, uh, young life when it was vibrant, had water. Did it have enough atmosphere to sustain, like, vegetation? We're not sure about that. And then two years ago, they always do these at an opposition. That's when Mars is closest to Earth. Every two years, uh, the United Arab Emirates launched an orbiter named Hope, and China launched their first orbiter uh, called Tanwan, and it had a lander. So UAE and China both, for the very first time, sent things to Mars, and it worked out okay for them, which... Uh, Mars has been, like I said, the graveyard to a lot of American and Russian spacecraft that didn't make it there. So we've got seven orbiters. We just lost the India, had their first spacecraft orbiting Mars, and it just, uh, they lost contact with it a few uh, months ago. So we did have eight, but now we have seven spacecraft from Earth orbiting Mars when you look up at it at night. Here's what that Mars uh, Reconnaissance Orbiter found. Look at that. That how, how coincidental is it for it to be going over a cliff, photographing it just when a landslide started to happen? That is incredible that they caught this in motion. Uh, they've also caught uh, dust avalanches on Mars. They're not sure if this is even seepage from underneath the water of Mars. That's what it looks like more. But they, they, they're saying that there's a dust avalanche going on there. Here are the NASA rovers that have been put on Mars by the Jet Propulsion Lab. This is at the JPL in Pasadena, California, their research center. very Made very famous by the Big Bang sitcom on TV. Uh, we started out with the little rover Sojourner there that, that landed on a bag. Uh, that bounced basically, as did the rover on the left with the solar panels. We had two of those on Mars at the same time, Opportunity and Spirit. And uh, we, I did recently see the um, uh, PBS uh, program on OPI about these rovers, about uh, their personalities and, and how for over 10 years the scientists were so involved with these, they become like uh, they're, you know, they're friends on Mars all the time. And uh, so watch Oppie. I, I uh, give it a hearty endorsement uh, here on the uh, Stay Curious movie scale, which we don't have, but we could figure that out one day. Well, let's look at these three rovers that are on Mars right now. That's right. I said three. Uh, that was Curiosity. And uh, uh, look how much bigger Curiosity and Perseverance are. Now, Curiosity landed 11 years ago, and basically Perseverance is the same vehicle with an upgrade on the wheels, and it has some other scientific instrumentation on it. All of these, uh, all four of these rovers, all three of these rovers had on them a little uh, way to uh, touch rock and, and wipe it off because all the rocks on Mars are covered with iron oxide. That's why Mars' surface is red is the gigantic volcanoes that belched for millions of years on one side of Mars and created a big dimple on Mars. It's, 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 a, it's called Tharsis Bulge, and it is a bulge of like six gigantic volcanoes, all larger than anything we've seen on Earth. The largest Olympus Mons is 17 miles high. Uh, we could see the peak of it if it was in situated in Atlanta, you could see the peak of it from Detroit looking south or from uh, 
Orlando looking north. It is so tall. If we put uh, Olympus Mons where Atlanta is. But the um, the rovers have been uh, a genesis of technology that has been incorporated in your smart cars. The SUV size uh, spear, uh, rover there that's just like Curiosity and Perseverance has on it a lot of technology that are on today's cars that beep when a car is passing you or you go in the other lane. This is the type of technology we needed on Mars because to communicate with the rover on Mars is a 20 minute delay in 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 that time because Mars being usually around over over 50 to 100 million miles away uh, it takes uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes for a signal to reach Mars and then another 10 to 15 to come back. So the rovers had to have some autonomous smarts to them, and that's where the first smart navigation equipment came in. So uh, fascinating to think about the rovers on Mars are what are help making you drive safer on Earth. And here is a first curiosity. Uh, 11 years on the planet. It uh, uh, is powered by a nuclear generator, so it doesn't have solar panels like Opportunity and Spirit did to break down. This is a selfie that they make out of combining a bunch of images, uh, including that they combine images where the hand would be taken, uh, a lot of these, the arm of the scientific payload there. So that's a curiosity. Curiosity landed in a, an area that we know is drenched with water, and it has, it has showed us that the uh, the Mars could have supported water in this area. Could it have supported life is another question. Uh, and there is, is a perseverance, very much looking the same. Look at those outcrops behind it there. That layering of, of, of rock it can only be done uh, with water, flowing water, present over millions and millions of years. And the roundness of the rocks uh, just indicate, everything indicates that, that both these rovers are where Mars was drenched with liquid. And they're hoping to find fossils, all right? They haven't claimed to have found any fossils. I think anything on the surface will have been scrubbed by radiation from the sun because there's no ozone layer. The Mars atmosphere is very, very thin. At the top of Mount Everest is is thicker than than at, at the surface of Mars. Uh, but yet that that one percent of the Earth's atmosphere that Mars is can sustain winds and dust devils that cleared off the. Uh, uh, rovers from time to time and there is ingenuity the first uh winged vehicle to be put on a an alien world not really wings it's a helicopter with rotary blades uh, but the first flying machine we'll call it put on any other world not too big about the size of a, a very small microwave oven and uh, it has made over 30 sorties Flights. It was they only wanted to do five experimental flights with this and call it done. And after those five flights were so successful, and uh, Perseverance has been on for over a year on Mars, it's done over 30 flights and traveled over a quarter mile from where it's at. There. Yes, I said three rovers. This is the rover of China. All right, that is on the surface of Mars right now. It actually laid down a GoPro type camera and then walked away from it as it took this selfie picture of its landing platform and the China rover itself. It's still active. They don't release hardly any photographs of what they're uh, investigating. So uh, anybody, we don't know any kinds of problems it's having with the dust settling on its solar panels as its power source. And we just, that MRO, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, is so powerful that it took this photograph of the Chinese lander after it landed. You can see the jet spray uh, spraying out, clearing out over the Martian landscape there, and then the dark areas from the earlier gases uh, as it landed 
on there. Now, we just lost a fourth vehicle on Mars. Uh, InSight was not a rover. It was a stationary uh, spacecraft that NASA landed three years ago. And its solar panels have become too covered with dust and it lost its energy power in the, the, the winter time that it's experiencing now on the hemisphere. The southern hemisphere of Mars is going through winter right now. This is what this very simple yet complex with science lander had on it. It had a heat flow experiment right off my arm. Uh, that was important to try to, to try to gauge what is the inside of Mars like. And if you can listen to the inside like a, a doctor listens to your heart and lungs with a stethoscope, you can understand things that are going inside of a, a rocky planet. And uh, it experienced some a few Mars quakes, experienced a, a couple of big meteors hitting that kind of rung the bell inside with uh, Mars quakes. And uh, so a very important mission there to understand the inside of Mars. And then we can then maybe understand how did it lose so quickly its ability to sustain water and life? Because we think this water was in the first billion years of Mars's uh, life. And all the planets were uh, evolved out of a solar nebula about five billion years ago. And a billion is so much you can't even imagine it, a thousand million uh, but uh, easy to say, but hard to com comprehend. So that's a long period of time, and Mars has been like this. It is a dead world, at least on the surface, for a long time. Well, we can't forget two landers, as you look up at Mars, that pioneered all this in 1976. Two landers called Viking landed on Mars on a separate sides of the planet. They weren't rovers. They were stationary, very heavy, very difficult to land. Both of them made it. There was an orbiter also orbiting the Mars called Viking, Viking 1 and 2. So uh, uh, you can't forget them. And each of them had an experiment that scooped up some Martian soil, put it in a little chamber incubator, dropped some water on it, and heated it up. The idea would be if there's any living organisms in there, they, they would be heated up and outgassed as, as their, their bodies deteriorated and we detect stuff in there. And what were the results of both sites were positive, positive for life in this life detecting uh, machine from the groundbreaking 1976 Viking landers. This is a Viking 2 landing site. And you see the, the instruments and stuff on this panorama. Well, scientists quickly said, hmm, well, maybe that's a, we think that's a chemical reaction more than a, a biological reaction because maybe some chemicals on Mars can react like that and give us this false positive. So yet it's still an open debate. Did these Mars searching for life incubators actually find life in 1976? And, eh, you know, scientists really want to be be uh, dead uh, dead on when they announce life discovered somewhere and don't want it to kind of be an iffy thing. And then years later, they find out it was a chemical reaction. But there's still a lot of people that think Viking 1 and 2 did find living creatures uh, or evidence of, of uh, their carcasses, uh, micro organisms uh, that outgassed on Mars. So we'll revisit that a little bit. Maybe... Maybe there was another event where we actually discovered some kind of life on Mars and then said, oh, it looks like life, but it might be something else. So you stay curious. I got another story for you. I want to show you some amazing footage or, or, or video of when we did land on Mars with both Perseverance and Opportunity. Well, when Perseverance landed a little over a year ago in February, uh, February 18th to be exact, 2021. It was an amazing video it sent back because they landed this big heavy SUV rover on a sky crane. That here you have the separation of the heat shield from the main body exposing the lander. And then when the lander uh, uh, got close, this, this top came off and what was exposed was a jet pack that flew 
to a landing site as the all of the telemetry and photographs are being made, matching the surface of Mars with the known area and finding big rocks immediately and, and computer analyzing this instantly and finding a spot to lay down. And then the sky crane lowered it to the, to the bottom. And incredibly, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter photographed the Perseverance under its uh, parachute. Uh, isn't that amazing? Just before it was relief, and then the sky crane took off. There you see the landing site. Look, it looks, it looks just like a, a tributary, a delta of the uh, Mississippi that's been drained. And here's the incredible video, just, just YouTube uh, Perseverance landing on Mars in this three minute, 25 second video will blow your mind. One is so sharp. On the right is the Mars soil being churned up by the exhaust of the sky crane that's in the top left. And the sky crane jetpack is lowering on the bottom by rope that they bought at Walmart, I kid you not, uh, this spacecraft to the surface of Mars, this rover. And there's an artist's conception of it. What, I mean, can you imagine the boardroom uh, uh, talking about that, Marty? You've been in, 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 you know, heard a lot of wild things in the space program. Well, we're going to land this thing by a, a jet pack, and then uh, we're going to lower it by a bunch of ropes. Then the ropes are going to cut themselves, and then this jet pack flies away and crashes, so it's not near and uh, contaminates the scene. Just amazing. Well, there's where MRO photographed the back shell on the left, the descent stage. Perseverance is right there, and the heat shield's on the right. Well, wouldn't you know, Perseverance drove over there to its parachute and back shell close enough that opportunity, the, the, uh, the, the helicopter ingenuity, drove up to it and took these amazing photographs of where the cover had crashed into the surface. Isn't that amazing? And there in the back, you see the uh, the uh, parachute. Just, I think these are one of the most incredible shots uh, for a helicopter on Mars to go up and investigate the back shell that was ejected. And underneath this was the, the jet pack that lowered the entire thing. And there it is. And the engineering data that scientists could get from this uh, understanding how this broke up, what stuck together, what didn't, what are they amazed about in this picture that, that worked. And maybe one day human beings will walk up to this and uh, will be someone, some uh, space pirate will be selling pieces on it on eBay, Marty. That would be cool. Well, the landing site for uh, uh, Perseverance, as all landing sites on Mars, was renamed after a famous person that uh, consensus was made. What do we call this landing site? And they decided to call it Octavia Butler Landing Site after this lady who is a science fiction writer. She died uh, about 10 years ago at age 58. And uh, she uh, was a... Um, uh, here's some of her work here. I've got the... Um, there she is right there with uh, Octavia Butler. All right, was a science fiction writer. This is some of her work. Uh, she won, the, she's the first uh, African-American woman to win the Hugo Award uh, for excellence in uh, science fiction writing. Uh, and they're uh, uh, Wild Seeds, pretty well known. Blood Child, Dawn, Fledgling was her last uh, uh, book that she, she wrote. So, uh, and this is common around the uh, Mars. We have other sites named after Carl Sagan, the great astronomer. Uh, we have the uh, Challenger. Uh, that's what they named the uh, uh, Sojourner landing site. Um, the uh, Where Opportunity landed was called the Challenger Memorial Station. Where Spirit landed was called the Columbia Memorial Station after the shuttle accidents. Uh, Bradbury Landing is another one where InSight landed. It's called Bradbury after the science fiction writer um, uh, Ray Bradbury. So uh, we're glad to, to, to honor people like that and uh, uh, with permanent 
places on Mars that now have names that someday humans, without a doubt, will visit. Well, a little bit of Mars knowledge here on Stay Curious uh, as we take you down to the surface of Mars. This, uh, this is a scale model of the Earth, Mars, and the Moon. So do you get it? Mars is about twice the size of uh, the Moon and about half the size of the Earth. Not a very big world. Uh, it's cold like Antarctica there or like about 30,000 feet where airplanes, uh, jet uh, passenger planes fly. Uh, Mars has um, uh, two moons, very small moons that, that uh, are like uh, the um, uh, one's 10 miles and one's barely five miles, Phobos and Deimos. In fact, there was a conjecture in the early days before we sent spacecraft to Mars in 1960s that the Mars... Uh, moons were artificial satellites by uh, Martians uh, and big so that they could signal the Earth. All of Mars there, the land surface area, equals about all the dry land of Earth because you know Earth is 70% water. Mars has about 40% Earth's gravity, so think a little less than half of Earth's gravity. So if you weigh 180 pounds on on uh Earth, you're going to probably weigh about uh, 90 on Mars. It does have a 24 and a half hour day. Ours is about 24 hours to the minute, and uh, Mars is 24.6 hours a day. It's tilted on its axis, just about like the Earth is at 23 and a half degrees, or 24 and a half degrees. So something hit both Earth and Mars to kind of knock us over on our spin. Uh, Mars's atmosphere is made of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, mostly carbon dioxide. Ours is 70% nitrogen and 29% oxygen. Well, it's about 50% uh, carbon dioxide and uh, somewhere around 40% nitrogen and in the rest. There, there's frozen water in the soil and polar caps, and there might be underground streams or lakes. We're not sure about that. Um, and the seasons are similar to Earth's, okay, but of course longer. Mars takes two years to go around the sun, at, uh, over 600, about 688 days. Well, summertime, it can reach 50 at your feet in the summertime on Mars, but at your knees, it's going to be about 30. In the top of your head, it's going to be below freezing, all right? That's how thin the atmosphere is. It doesn't keep anything... Uh, warm uh, at the, except down at the surface layer. So it is very cold. Mars is not the kind of place to uh, raise your kids like the uh, Elton John song says and it's pretty uh, remarkable that um, um, uh, it does sustain uh, the weather atmosphere that it has there. So that's Mars in a nutshell. And as we look back in time, Mars uh, uh, 3 billion years ago may have looked like then, and now it looks like now. And then Venus may have also had lakes in an atmosphere, but now is, is covered in a 30-mile dense atmosphere. And um, uh, there's over 200 volcanoes, some of them active on Venus. The Earth... Three billion years ago was a hot molten uh, surface uh, forming, cooling. Uh, of course, Mars f further away must have cooled quicker, right? And today we're covered with water, the water planet. As we look for places to go to Mars to find life, all right, we went inside Gale Crater is where uh, upper, uh, Curiosity landed. And it has it is now in that green area is climbing up in 10 years uh, up that peak of this uh, Gale Crater to try to find layers where, man, it, wouldn't it be great that it would find seashells somewhere? Just one seashell is all we need to find. Well, here's where all the landers are. They're spread out across the, the, the planet. You got Phoenix Lander in the upper left was a polar uh, fixed uh, lander that lasted a couple years, Viking One and Pathfinder. Pathfinder is where uh, opportunity, I mean, not opportunity, Sojourner, 
the Pathfinder was the lander and Sojourner was the rover. There you see opportunity. Perseverance is right there in uh, curiosity. They're not too far apart, actually. Uh, you saw insight was uh, towards the equator of Mars and Viking 2 and spirit off there on the right there. So we've, we've learned a lot of different areas of Mars. We've not landed in the same areas. And to, to look at these vistas, just to, to wonder, oh my gosh, that if these mountains could talk, what would they say? Now that yellow circle is actually ingenuity flying in that panorama of, of Mars. Isn't that gorgeous? Another beautiful, beautiful scene on Mars, all right, where it looks like the Wild West. You're, you're, you're waiting for wagon train to come around the corner there. In another gorgeous scene of Mars, uh, proving again that there had to be liquid there, this island there all by itself, the, the layers of striated rock can only be done by sedimentary rock over millions and millions and millions of years. Within the distance are these gorgeous high rocks of the Martian atmosphere there. Another look at a, at a panorama around Mars. Just breathtaking, I think. And to think about the possibility of life in Mars. And to look right down in the dirt of Mars. When you're thinking of Mars, you got to think desert. Think about the times you've been out on a hot desert. And uh, though it's not hot on Mars, you still got this. It's rock everywhere. I want to grip my teeth all the time when I'm out there uh, walking around in the rocks. It's, it's dirty. And the wheels have taken a big hit. Uh, over the years of roving on Mars. They have, uh, the JPL scientists have learned a lot from Curiosity about how these rover wheels were breaking apart, so then they improved them for uh, perseverance. But this is a low-level view from a navigation camera of the uh, the, the wheels on, on Mars. And what's fun to watch Oppie, uh, the PBS special on the uh, two rovers, Opportunity and Spirit, is to hear the noises on Mars. Yes, we took a uh, uh, some uh, microphones to Mars to hear the, the wind blow, and they picked up some of the machinery mo maneuver moving. And uh, that's a cool thing about Oppies when you see that. Well, here are the wheel sizes of the, the uh, rovers, how they progressed over uh, three decades, basically, of research. Uh, Sojourner in 1997, Spirit and Opportunity in 2004, and Curiosity. And then Perseverances have been rebuilt a little bit on there. <coughs> this is a photograph of Mars taken by the European uh, Arab Emirates orbiter. And uh, some time ago, back in 1994, uh, or 84, actually, a rock was discovered on Mar, on the Antarctica that become very famous. ALH 8401. That, that becomes so famous that a president of the United States was moved to comment about this Martian rock because though it was found in 1984 laying on the surface of Antarctica, just like a lot of uh, meteorites are, uh, drawn in by the magnetic poles. This rock was analyzed with a electron microscope, and this image was released to the public in 1996. And what does that look like? A lot of people said it looks like Streptococcus or, or that or, or type of bacteria or virus. Uh, you know, now this thing is a super tiny thing. It's just microns. Uh, uh, long and takes, I don't know how many thousands of microns to make the width of a hair, but this is a very small electron microscope thing. Some of you have forgotten about this. And, and uh, uh, because it's been 26 years ago. And yes, President Clinton made a statement regarding this Martian meteorite. I took it off the internet here from the White House, an official immediate release of August 7th, 1996, where on the South Lawn, President Clinton came out and said that, whoops, uh, that uh, after years of exploration and intense study, uh, this Martian rock 
may have the first signs of life on it. I'm determined that the American space program will put its full intellectual power and technical technological prowess behind the search for further evidence of life on Mars. 26 years ago, President Clinton said uh, he wanted America to put you know, full intellectual power and technological prowess to find out if this was real or not. Uh, and he continued, it is well worth contemplating how we reach this moment of discovery. I mean, we were virtually saying that this was life. And President Clinton elaborated, more than four billion years ago, this piece of rock was formed from a part of the original crust of Mars. After billions of years, it was broke from the surface of Mars and began a 16 million year journey through space that would end here on Earth. It arrived in a meteor shower 13,000 years ago. And in 1984, an American scientist on an annual U.S. government mission to search for meteors on the Antarctic and on Antarctica picked it up and looked, uh, took it to be studied. And they numbered the rock 84001. Well, as, Mr., as President Clinton says, today rock 84001 speaks to us across all those billions of years and millions of miles. It speaks of the possibility of life. If this discovery is confirmed, it will surely be one of the most stunning insights into our universe that science has ever uncovered. And then he concludes his press, impromptu press conference about this Mars rock and that this could be life we're looking at. President Clinton said in 1996, we will continue to listen closely to what, has, what this rock has to say as we continue the search for answers and for knowledge that it's as old as humanity itself, but essential to our people's future. So, well, 26 years ago, a president wanted full disclosure of what was going on here. Marty, I haven't heard any more about it in 25 years of you. No, no, not at all. No, so, well, we got another president, and uh, which happened to be Republican, so they're not going to pursue what the Demo a Democratic president did, just as vice versa. And and then that sad because uh, we would be we would have colonies on the Mars right now if uh, Werner von Braun had had his way. He'd been on the moon in 1985. He said in 1970s when we were ending the moon uh, race. So. Well, I think it's fascinating to look back and maybe we'll look back and say that we did find life on Mars. Maybe those false positives of Viking were true positives. Maybe this is a bacteria of Mars. Well, there was a lot of explanations for it, yet there was a lot of data that, that showed that this uh, was around some wet Mars at, uh, at, uh, during this time on the surface. So. Marty, you can buy a piece of Mars if you want. You got $53,000 for a piece of the moon. How about, uh, uh, they call these Mars uh, rock shigatites. Uh, how about $8,519.22, by the way, on Etsy there. I think I'll pass on that. Uh, but Tom uh, and his grandson are watching. Hey, Tom. Gary Gerald's watching. Uh, we've got Hanson's watching. Cynthia Rossi. And Mariana Kritz is watching. I'll bet all of them would love to own one of these Martian rocks. What do you think, Marty? You got the checkbook for that? Uh, I have a checkbook, but not for that. <laughs> uh, we were at the Space Center, and they do have like a grain of sand that come from a Mars meteorite. And it was pretty reasonable, like under 100 bucks. I've seen those for sale a lot in there but uh if they can authenticate it's from mars someone's going to be out there to buy it and you look up you th all, all that we've been talking about today there's mars again through my backyard telescope i can't wait to look at it tonight it's going to be up and bright for the next couple months so if you don't have a telescope just go out and look at it and just for a moment stop and think about the seven spacecraft that humans have built the uh, orbiting it the, the 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 three rovers two uh, american one chinese rover uh the wreckage that's on the planet from earthlings trying to to uh, find martians and you know who's who really wants to go to mars and then we will be the martians the uh, earthlings become martians is of course elon musk and he's so serious about it that what we're looking at here marty 
are eight landing sites proposed by Musk using NASA data. That's the globe of Mars. This happens to be the volcanoes on Mars. They're dormant on the far left there. They look like volcanoes there. And then he's chosen a flat area uh, where these uh, uh, volcanoes erupted, kind of the, the lowlands below them that has a lot of water, we think, underground there. So there's an eight specific areas that NASA is sharing data with SpaceX about where to land. Where are we going to land, Marty? Where are we going to land? We're going to land this. We're going to land the Starship. And this is the big rocket out in Texas and with the Starship being in the center, being mated to it. And the Starship's the black and the BFR, they call it. The big friggin' rocket is, uh, that's honestly what he calls it, is the first stage to get this up 20 miles so it can get into orbit. They're hoping to do that this year, is fly that this year in Earth orbit. And then that is the lander on the moon. And then away we go to Mars. And here we are, uh, the artist's conception of a starship landing on Mars. And he just doesn't, he being Elon Musk, just doesn't want to send one starship to Mars. What good would that be, all right? We want to send a bunch of them to Mars. And we've been conjecturing how they're going to get down on the moon's surface when they land this thing. See up above my head, Marty, they have a platform like a painter's uh, 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 scaffolding. scaffolding. Yeah, painter's scaffolding that they're they're lowering down to the surface down there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven starships there, each with a hundred people on it. And uh, you know what they're all saying right there, Marty? Yeah, I wanna go home. I'm hungry, where's the cafeteria? <laughs> no cafeterias on Mars, you gotta bring your own food with you. And it's gonna be a nine month journey there and a nine month journey back, so. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at Mars, the little boots on the ground with Marty and me today on Stay Curious. We know that there just has to be some kind of life on Mars, Marty. And 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 hopefully mankind can find out before you and I leave this Earth. So we are grateful for everybody watching Stay Curious today. We appreciate you all. Hope you've had a great holiday. We're going to be with you to the end of the week. We're going to do a Friday show on top 10. A couple of you have offered your top 10 uh, information, your top 10 selections. We'll do that on Friday. Tomorrow, I'm going to look at the shuttles of the month of December that we kind of neglected. Eight shuttles of the month. Two of them were Hubble repair missions. And um, Thursday, we're looking to have a guest in here promoting moon water. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, but until then, we want everyone to just kick back, relax. You know, if you're on vacation this week, uh, uh, away from school or work for a while, go to just Google Mars, uh, Mars rover uh, pictures and look at these stunning images from Perseverance and Opportunity, like I've been showing you today. Boots on the ground. We're going to Mars. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, uh, going around the mountain so again we're open today hope that if you're on vacation you can make it to see us in our museum marty we have anything to finish up on stay curious nope on the our stream lab board there good thank you for sharing on our ucx family microphone there and until tomorrow when we do it again and and hopefully have some connection with you with Mars today, tomorrow we're going to connect with the space program again. And until then, I'm Mark Marquez saying we can't wait to see you again to bridge the space between us.